Greetings, Body Messiah. Mark Pooley here with Yahweh Yeshua Assembly in Fort Myers, Florida, bringing you another teaching from Yahweh's laws and commandments. Pray that you had a good week. Shabbat Shalom, everybody. Um, yesterday I did a real quick word type thing on uh, YouTube about the Hebraic Torah awakening, that how Yahweh has been awakening, and many of us, it's because of this awakening, that we are in the Hebraic truth, we are following Torah, and we have seen from the scriptures itself, just how important Torah is and how so many things that we used to read through Western eyes of Christianity that we didn't see, that we now see. And you wonder, how did we miss these things? How? Uh, is the body, and especially Christianity, still missing these truths and how churches and ministries are not seeing these things, or if they're seeing them, it doesn't produce a life-altering, ministry-altering change. And that's what it's all about is that when Yahweh's Spirit, the Ruach, opens and awakens your eyes, you will change every aspect of your life and ministry to line up with Yahweh's instructions. And we know that Torah means instructions or teachings. So today, uh, I'm going to endeavor to continue teaching on the subject of the Torah. And what I want to share with you today is about the promises that come to you when you have a relationship with the Father. And it's all based on having a relationship with Yahweh. And when out of that relationship with Yahweh, you are awakened on the inside of you to his laws and commandments. And because of your relationship with Yahweh, you step out in faith and you begin to be faithful in obeying Yahweh's laws and commandments. And when you do that, the promise of those laws and commandments produces life, eternal life. And I know a lot of people don't believe that his laws and commandments can produce eternal life, but it doesn't matter what other people say or believe or what I say or believe. It's what Yahweh's instructions say that matters. So first off, let's start out in John 10.10. 10, and we all, we all know this. This is very familiar. If you've come out of Christianity or involved in any religion, you have heard this scripture numerous times before. And it says that the thief, Hasatan, comes not but for to kill, steal, and destroy. And then Yahshua said, but I have come to give you life and that life more abundantly. Now, he doesn't say how he's going to give that life more abundantly. And that means abundance in quantity 
and abundance in quality so that you will have a quality of life. Whether you're 95 or 125, Yahweh wants you to have a quality of life. He doesn't want you just surviving. He doesn't want you just existing. He wants you and I to have a quality of life. And, and Yeshua said that he came to see to it that you and I would have life and have it more abundantly. Now again, he didn't say in this verse how you and I are going to receive that life. Now, Christianity teaches that all you got to do is believe in the Messiah and then you have that life. Well, that's not what the scripture necessarily teaches on a whole. You may pull one verse out of context and this other verse out of context and try to make it say something it doesn't say. But we need to go to what Yeshua said and we need to go to what Yahweh said. So let's go to Matthew 19 and we will see that a rich young ruler came to the Messiah seeking answers concerning eternal life, everlasting life, Zoe life. And it says in verse 16, and see, one came and said to him, Good teacher, what good shall I do to have everlasting life? And other versions say, Master, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And notice what Yahshua responded, but focus in on what he did not say. And he, Yahshua, said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good except one, Elohim. So right then and there, that separates Yahshua is not Elohim. Yahshua is not a deity. All right? So he's saying that the Father, Yahweh, Yahweh is the good one, Elohim. Okay, then he says, but if you wish to enter into eternal life, everlasting life, this version I'm reading of says guard the commandments. And guard is a military word. It means to protect it, keep it. Keep doing it. Be faithful to it. So we can read it this way. If you want to enter into everlasting life, be faithful and keep doing the commandments. Notice what it doesn't say. Out of the mouth of the Messiah, he did not say, believe in me and that's all you've got to do. No? Now, think about what we talked about, I think, a week ago, or maybe two weeks ago, in 1 John chapter 2, where the Apostle John said, anybody that says that they know him, meaning Yahweh and Yeshua, and does not keep the commandments, the Apostle John said, he is a liar and the truth is not in him. So this tells us that when we know him, when we have a relationship with the Father, we will be faithful, and that's a key word. The book of Galatians, when it talks about faith, 
That word is meaning faithfulness, faithful to Yahweh, faithful to his laws and commandments, faithful in or to the Messiah. So it says here that if you want to enter into everlasting life, keep the commandments. Be faithful to the commandments. You and, and so how Yeshua is going to give us and bring to us from John 10, 10, life and that life more abundantly is by empowering you with the Ruach, which took place in Acts chapter 2 at the Feast of Pentecost. He empowered you with Yahweh's Spirit. Yahweh sent His Spirit to empower you to be faithful. Yes, it's empowerment to perform signs, wonders, and miracles. But it's also the empowerment to be faithful to Yahweh by keeping his commandments. You cannot be faithful to Yahweh and disobey his commandments. You can't be faithful, no matter what you think or believe or been told, you cannot be faithful to Yahweh and not keep his Shabbat. You cannot be faithful to Yahweh and eat unclean foods. You cannot be faithful to Yahweh to have images above the earth, upon the earth, or below the earth on your body or in your house or upon your house. One of the things that is very common in Florida is they will have a sun god image on their house. Not realizing that's a pagan symbol and an invitation to Hasatan to come in and do whatever he wants to do to them. So you and I cannot be faithful to Yahweh and disobey his commandments. Remember Hebrews 11, I believe, verse 6. It says that it is impossible to please Yahweh without, most versions say faith, but it means faithfulness. He said, it is impossible to please Yahweh without being faithful to him. So you and I cannot please Yahweh. We may confess his word by faith. We may do many other things by faith. But if we're not being faithful to Yahweh by keeping his commandments, we are not bringing plea, pleasure, honor, praise, and worship to Yahweh. So understand this, that when Yeshua said, I have come to give you life and to give it to you more abundantly, and he shows us how we are going to receive that life because the rich young ruler wanted to know how to enter into life, everlasting life, Zoe life, abundant life, eternal life. Yeshua's response was, keep the commandments. And then the young man said, which ones? And then Yahweh repeats many of the commandments. And the young man said in verse 20, all these I have kept since my youth. 
And then Yeshua said, well, there's one thing you lack. Go and sell all that you have and give to the poor and come follow me. And the rich young ruler did not want to obey that instruction. See, that wasn't a suggestion. That was a commandment. And he did not respond to it by faith. He was not faithful to it. The scripture says that he went away grieved. Why? Because his wealth had a, had a hold on him. Now, here's something to look at. Look in Genesis chapter 12. Genesis chapter 12. And it says, And Yahweh said to Abram, Go yourselves out of your land from your relatives and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. And then Yahweh says to him, he promises, I'll make, if you do this, if you obey, I'll make you a great nation. I'll bless you and your name will be great and you shall be a blessing, and I shall bless those who bless you, and I will curse those who curses you. The thing that we need to focus in on, Yahweh gave Abraham a commandment to leave his relative's house, his father's land, his father. Why? Because he was pagan. And he said to separate yourself and to go into a land. He didn't even tell, you know, it's one thing for Yahweh to say, I want you to pack up and move to the mountains of Colorado. Mm -hmm. Okay, you have an idea where you're going. That's a whole lot easier to obey than... For Yahweh to say, I want you to pack up and move. And that's the last he said. And you have to begin the process of being faithful to obey his commandments and start packing up and pre preparing to move. You don't need to know where just yet. Now your mind wants to know where. I know I would. But... Uh, Abram, he obeyed. He obeyed. He was faithful. He was faithful to Yahweh's laws and commandments all the way in Genesis 12. Now, I was doing some research and some studying on the Torah. And see, the Torah started in the garden when Yahweh gave them one commandment, one instruction. They could do whatever they want. Adam and Eve could do whatever they wanted except for one thing. They were not to eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And they did not do that. So we see what that tells us is that the Torah, Yahweh's laws and commandments started in the garden. It did not start when Yahweh gave it to Moshe. So being faithful to Yahweh's laws and commandments started in the garden. Now we know that Adam and Eve were not faithful, and so sin entered. We also see in Genesis chapter 4 with Cain and Abel, they understood that Yahweh's laws and commandments was to bring the first fruit of their increase the tithe, to Yahweh. Now, 
I believe it, Abel was the one that that had the. Here, let's look. Make sure I I always confuse the names. Which one was which? Okay. Abel was the tiller of the ground. And wait, well, in Genesis 4 1, it says, And Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bore uh, Cain, and she said, I've gained a man. And again, she gave birth to his brother Abel, and Abel became a keeper of the sheep. So it was Cain that slew Abel, and it was Abel that brought, if you read the context here, that Abel brought the best, the first born of his flock to Yahweh. Cain did not bring the first fruits. And that's why, and if you read um, verse 6, and Yahweh said to um, Cain, why is he wroth, and why is your face fallen? Is it not if you do good, or if you obey Yahweh's laws and commandments, you will be accepted? And if you do not obey Yahweh's laws and commandments, sin is at the door. And that is the way it's been since the beginning of time, that how you and I enter into everlasting life is by having a relationship with the Father and by being faithful through the empowerment of, the, of Yahweh's Spirit, through Messiah, to be faithful to Yahweh and to his laws and commandments. That's how Yeshua said he was going to bring us everlasting life, Zoe life, eternal life, abundant life. And that's what the Messiah communicated to the rich young man when he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? So this tells me that the way to inherit eternal life is you are awakened, enlightened to Yahweh by the power of his spirit through the Messiah and out of that relationship with Yahweh you begin to learn and then begin to be faithful to his laws and commandments, to his instructions. And the result will be everlasting life. Now, let's look <clears throat> in the Torah and in the first covenant to see what Yahweh says about this. Did Yahweh ever say that if you are faithful, and that's the key word, that you are faithful to keep his commandments that you would receive life, everlasting life, eternal life. You know, I've been thinking about this for a number of weeks. Thinking about Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Ezekiel, Isaiah, um, and all the other Pete, Caleb, Joshua, people, Ruth, Esther, people that were faithful to Yahweh and faithful in keeping his commandments. Did they receive eternal life? And 
It was when we were in Christianity, we were taught that no one could receive eternal life before Messiah Yeshua. And only those in Messiah Yeshua, they didn't say Messiah Yeshua, they said JC, could receive eternal life. But that is not accurate because we see that the grace of Yahweh, the mercy of Yahweh, was alive and well and functioning in the body, in the first covenant, through or in the people that lived in that time who were faithful. Now, Yeshua said, if you want to enter into life, be faithful and keep my commandments. And so if Abraham, now, if you go to real quickly, um, here, let's, let's look at a verse. I was going to do a separate teaching on it, but I'll just highlight it real quickly. Um, Go, go with me to Romans chapter 4. And then we'll get back to um, what we were talking about. Galatians chapter 4. You said Romans. Oh, sorry. Romans chapter 4. Thank you, baby. Mm -hmm. See, a man that finds... A good wife finds a good thing. He has favor from Yah. And has favor from Yah. Okay, Romans chapter 4, verse 3, it says, For what saith the scripture? And they are referring to a, uh, Genesis 26, 5. It says, Abraham believed Yahweh, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. So, Christianity has taught that just by your faith and faith alone, that's all you need and it will be counted for righteousness. But that's not what this is referring to. If you go to the scripture that Paul is quoting, it comes from Genesis 26, verse 5. And in Genesis 26, verse 5, it said, Abraham obeyed Yahweh's voice. Abraham obeyed Yahweh's voice. Abraham obeyed Yahweh's voice. In Genesis 15, 6, it says, and it says basically the same thing, and he believed in Yahweh, meaning Abram, and he counted it to him for righteousness. He was faithful to Yahweh, by obeying his voice. See, we need to understand that obeying Yahweh's laws and commandments is not an option. If you are wanting to please Yahweh, if you are declaring and wanting to serve the Elohim of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and want to have eternal life. We need to be faithful to Yahweh's laws and commandments. And when we are faithful to Yahweh's laws and commandments, it does two things. It says we believe in Yahweh and our belief will be counted for righteousness. And because of that, we will then have an experience 
eternal life. As long as we continue, it's not a one-time shot. I know a lot of people believe one saved, always saved, but that is so erroneous. Even in Christianity, I taught that that is not accurate because the Apostle Paul said, if you continue in the book of Colossians, I believe it's chapter one, he said, if you continue in the faith, so it's all about continuing, being faithful to obey Yahweh's laws and commandments. That is what is going to set you apart. That is what is going to make you righteous. And that is what is going to determine if you have a good relationship with Yahweh. Now, when you're studying Israel, you'll see Israel was not faithful to Yahweh. They were not faithful to obey his laws and commandments. When the pressure came on, they caved to compromise. They caved to paganism. They caved to keep pagan days, pagan holidays, the pagan system, pagan worship, and they tried to mix it all together thinking Yahweh would be pleased with it. And no, Yahweh's pleased by you and I being faithful to his laws and commandments. So like I said before I got off on that bunny trail, let's see if the scripture says something in the Torah, in the first covenant, in the first part of the book, that would validate that eternal life was granted to believers of Israel, to those, <clears throat> excuse me, that kept and that were faithful to his laws and commandments because of their relationship. Now, if you're just trying to do it through your head or through Judaism, Talmudic laws, and that's what Galatians was all about and Paul was rebuking them, saying, you cannot be saved by keeping Jewish man-made laws. Just because you're circumcised doesn't mean you are grafted in, doesn't mean you're a Hebrew, doesn't mean you're Torah observant, doesn't mean you're, you have eternal life. And Yeshua came to correct all those that were, that were caught up under the bondage of Jewish man-made laws and to take them back to the original Hebraic scriptures and Torah and to be faithful. And to be faithful to keep what Yahweh says. You know, when you study Matthew 23, he was rebuking them for all their Jewish man-made laws. And he was encouraging them to keep things of Torah. All right, let's just get on with this. Proverbs 7, 2. So Proverbs chapter 7, verse 2 says, Keep my commandments and live. So we see here that the wisest man, Solomon, said that we are to keep Yahweh's commandments and they will produce <coughs> life. Look in Proverbs 4, 4. It says, let your heart, that's the key word, let your heart hold fast to my words or out of your heart, be faithful 
to my words, my laws, my commandments. Keep my commandments and live. Now, when you read in verse 20, it promises that those that are faithful to keep Yahweh's instructions, Yahweh's laws and commandments, and that find Yahweh's laws and commandments that are awakened to the Torah and to Yahweh's laws and commandments. Yahweh's laws and commandments will produce health and healing to all their flesh. Hallelujah! Healing comes from being faithful to Yahweh's laws and commandments. Can we back that up with something out of Torah? Exodus 15, 26 says, If you keep and listen to my voice and keep my statutes, my laws, my commandments, or in other words, be faithful to Yahweh's laws and commandments. When you are faithful to Yahweh's laws and commandments, he said, I will be Yahweh Rapha, Yahweh your healer. And he will not put on you or allow to be put on you the diseases that were put on Egypt. So we see that the Torah validates that if you are faithful to his statutes, to his commandments, to his laws, they will not only produce life, but that life will produce healing to all your flesh. Healing to all your flesh. So we need to look at our lives. Where am I not being faithful to Yahweh's laws and commandments? And Yahweh's spirit, the Ruach, will show you at some point in time. And the littlest thing that he might say to you, it might be a personal word to you that you're not to do this, or you're not to watch this, or you're not to listen to this, or you're not to hang around this, or you're not to do this, that, or the other thing, or you're to do something, but you haven't been listening. You haven't been faithful to his voice. Abraham was faithful to Yahweh's voice and it was counted to him as righteousness. Hallelujah. Look in Deuteronomy, well actually, uh, yeah, Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 1. Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 1. It says, all the commandments, so underline that word all, <clears throat> all the commandments that I am commanding you today, Yahweh says, you shall be careful or faithful to do. You shall be faithful to do all the commandments, and you need to read all that Yahweh was commanding children of Israel through Moshe in the book of Deuteronomy that you may live. So, and then it says, and multiply. You need increase? Be faithful to obey his laws and commandments. Not the ones you agree with, but all the ones that he has commanded. And one of them that so many people are not faithful to, there's a couple of them. One is tithing. They excuse it by saying, you know, we don't need to do that. We don't have a temple. We don't have a high priest. Yes, you do. His name is Yahshua. And we are still to support and present our tithes and offerings to Yahweh. And then we distribute them as he directs us. 
So we are still to be tithers and to give offerings, yes, to other Torah observant ministries, and yes, to people that might you might not be in connection with a, a assembly, but you know you have people you might know or you might see people that are poor on the street. Save your money, save your tithe, and you might not know what to do with it for a number of weeks, and all of a sudden Yahweh says, give it to so-and-so. Give it to this ministry. Give it to that individual. Give it to that organization that's feeding the poor or whatever the case may be. But And the other one that many that are, are not faithful to is keeping the Shabbat. Keeping the Shabbat. All right. So he said, all the commandments that I'm commanding you today, you shall be faithful or careful to do that you may live. That you may live. That you may have life. That you may have eternal life. So how do you get eternal life again? Yahshua said, keep the commandments if you want to enter into life. He said that he came to give us life. And how he came to give us life is by you and I being faithful to keep the commandments. And then we see in the Torah that this lines up with the Torah, that if you will be faithful to keep the commandments, you will experience life. You will experience even healing. In Deuteronomy chapter 4 and verse number 1, it says, Now listen, Israel, to the statutes and the judgments which I am teaching you to perform so that you may live. So Yahweh was giving them his instructions, his Torah, his laws and commandments. For what reason? Because he wanted them to have eternal life. He wanted them to enter into a relationship with him. He wanted them to be faithful in obeying his laws and commandments. And Yeshua came and he did this, just this. He was faithful. Philippians 2 says, even to the point of death, he was obedient. He was faithful. Regardless of what the pressure was, regardless of what the threats were, he was faithful to obey Yahweh's laws and commandments. And he showed us we can be faithful to obey Yahweh's laws and commandments. And because Yahshua is the Passover lamb, and because he was faithful in obeying Yahweh's laws and commandments, and he, by the Ruach, has empowered you and I to be faithful to keep his laws and commandments, we too, can have eternal life. And so this answers my question that I've been pondering for weeks about how were the people in the original covenant born again or saved? They had a relationship. They chose to have a relationship with the Creator, with Yahweh. How? By entering in and obey, being faithful to obey his laws and commandments. It was for the um, born Israelites, the native born, as well as for the sojourners. They both had to be faithful to keep Yahweh's laws and commandments. There was only one law. And that was Yahweh's instructions, not Christianity's instructions, not any other religion's instructions, but Yahweh's instructions, Yahweh's instructions. Uh, here's some other verses. Nehemiah 
chapter 9 and verse 29, and we're going to start to wind this down. I'm just going to rip off some other verses for you so that you can look at these on the own, but I'm sure you have gotten the jest of what I believe Yahweh is communicating to us, that it's all about being faithful to his commandments. Eternal life, abundant life, came to us by you and I being faithful to keeping Yahweh's laws and commandments and Yahshua, he showed us the way to do that. And that is by the power of Yahweh's spirit. Yes, you cannot do it in your own flesh. You need to do it. And the Ruach will empower you. If you will receive the baptism of his spirit, he will empower you to be faithful, to obey Yahweh's laws and commandments. Nehemiah 9.29 If a man observes them, he's referring to the Torah. Here, let me just turn there real quickly. Um, Nehemiah chapter 9 and verse number 29. It says, And testified against them that you might bring again unto thy law, yet they dealt proudly and hearkened, which means they did not listen with the intent to obey his commandments, but sinned against thy judgments, which if a man do, he shall live in them and withdrew the shoulder and hardened their neck. And, and if you read, let's drop back up. This is all in context about refusing to obey um, the Shabbat. They did not want, uh, verse 14, it says, And made known unto them thy holy Shabbat and commands them precepts, statutes, and laws by the hand of Moses. I would encourage you to read all of Nehemiah 9. It's talking about Nehemiah is trying to get them to come back to being faithful to Yahweh's laws and commandments, to keeping the Shabbat. But they didn't want to listen. They didn't want to hear it. And when we are like that, we will not enter into eternal life. We will not have everlasting life. It doesn't matter if you say with your mouth that you believe in the Creator, or you believe in JC, or even believe in Yahshua. If you are not faithful, and seeing this is determined at the end of your life, if you were faithful to keep his laws and commandments. Now, we all mess up. We all come short. We all break his laws and commandments in some way, shape, fashion, or form. But it's whether or not out of your heart you are desiring to be faithful to keep his laws and commandments. And when you are, when you realize you've missed it, when you realized you disobeyed, you repent of it. You renounce it. All right. You can read about Yahweh's laws and commandments producing life. You can read this in Ezekiel 20.11. You can read it in verse 13. Uh, Exodus 18, 25 is a good one. Or no, not 25, just verse 5. Leviticus 18 and verse 5. 
it says, You shall keep my statutes and my judgments by which a man may live if he does them, if he is faithful to do them, Yahweh said in the Torah that you would have life, everlasting life. And when you look up all these words that mean to live, it all means the same thing. Eternal life, abundant life, everlasting life. So it is not accurate to say that if you are not faithful, or if you, let me say that again. It is not accurate to say that you cannot be saved by keeping the Torah. When you are faithful to the Torah, when you are faithful to obey Yahweh's instructions, when you are faithful to obey his laws and commandments, Yahweh promises everlasting life. Yeshua even said, the Messiah said to the rich young ruler, keep my commandments and you will enter into everlasting life. Now he was keeping most of them, but when Yeshua gave him another commandment, he rejected it. Just like many people today might reject the commandment maybe of forgiveness or the, maybe the commandment of the Shabbat or maybe the commandment of unclean and clean foods or the commandment of tithes and offerings, whatever. Whatever you reject, you will walk away sorrowful. All right. Deuteronomy 30 and verse 20 says, By loving Yahweh, by obeying his voice, by holding fast to him or being faithful to him, for this is your life and length of days that you may live in the land. You will find if you do a study on length of days that it's all connected to obeying Yahweh's laws and commandments. Being faithful to obey Yahweh's laws and commandments. When you are, you will experience length of days. And here, here is another verse. Deuteronomy 5.33 says, You shall walk in all the way which Yahweh has commanded you, that you may live, that you may live, that you may live, that you may have eternal life. How? By being faithful to do his laws and commandments. And then it says, And it may be well with you that you may prolong your days in the land which you will possess. He promises that you will have a good quality life. You will have length of days, long life, when you and I are faithful to obey his laws and commandments when in our relationship with Yahweh. You have to have a relationship with Yahweh. This is all based on a relationship with Yahweh. Without a relation, a personal relationship with Yahweh, this is nothing but Judaism. This is nothing but works of the flesh. But when it's out of a relationship with the Most High, the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, then it will produce by the Ruach life, health, long life, eternal life. Romans 10.5. Two more scriptures. Romans 10.5. For Moses writes that the man who practices the righteousness which is based on the law, or the man that is faithful to obeying Yahweh's laws and commandments, shall live by the righteousness or by the keeping or by being faithful to Yahweh's laws and commandments. So the Apostle Paul says, 
that Moses, when he when he wrote about wrote about Yahweh's laws and commandments, and he is faithful to do those laws and commandments, he will live. So the Apostle Paul just said the same thing that we read in the Torah. One more verse, Proverbs 3, 1 and 2. Proverbs 3, 1 and 2. My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart be faithful to my commandments. But let your heart be faithful to Yahweh's laws and commandments for length of days and long life and shalom, which means wholeness, soundness, completeness, nothing missing, nothing broken, deep serenity. Shall they add to you? So all of these verses reveals to us that we can receive eternal life just like the children of Israel received eternal life, just like Yahshua was trying to impart eternal life into the rich young ruler, and just like he said that he came to give us life and that life more abundantly, how? By being faithful to Yahweh's laws and Commandments. So when you and I are being faithful to Yahweh's laws and commandments, they will produce life, they will produce eternal life, they will produce joyous life, they will produce an abundant life. And when you see when the children of Israel were faithful to Yahweh, the land in which he led them into, was a, was a land of abundance. Houses filled with good things. Vineyards and fig trees that produce humongous fruit. And that is the type of life that Yahweh came to give us through, my, uh, through Yeshua as we are faithful to obey his laws and commandments. I can just keep going on and on and on, emphasizing this, but my time's up. So Father, we praise you for this word. We praise you for your grace and your mercy. We praise you for the empowerment of your spirit that has awakened us to Torah, that has awakened us to Hebraic truth, that it's all about Israel, for Israel and to Israel that it's about your laws and commandments and being faithful to your laws and commandments produces eternal life. And that is what we want, eternal life, abundant life, joyous life, length of days, health and wholeness in every area of our life. So Father, thank you as we give you praise and Father, we pray for those that have not understood this yet. Awaken them to your truth. Awaken them to your Torah, to your instructions, to your laws and commandments so that they would be faithful to obey your laws and commandments and receive eternal life. So Father, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for the Hebrew awakening, the Torah awakening, the Israel awakening, and that you have graced us to be part of it. And so, Father, we thank you for it by the power of your name. Until next time, Yahweh bless you, Yahweh make his face shine upon you, and Yahweh make you faithful. If you want to connect with us, you can connect with us at YahwehYeshuaAssembly.com is our website, and you connect with us on Facebook as well. Until next time, shalom, shalom.